the Bourne film trilogy, consisting of the Bourne Identity, 2002, the Bourne Supremacy, 2004, and the Bourne Automatum, 2007, directed by Doug Lehman and Paul Greengrass, is often considered a near-perfect trilogy for several reasons. Each film in the trilogy maintains a high level of quality in terms of storytelling, action sequences, and character development. The protagonist, Jason Bourne, portrayed by Matt Damon, undergoes significant development throughout the trilogy, from an amnesiac assassin searching for his identity in the first film, to a man seeking answers and redemption. The character arc is well-crafted and engaging. The trilogy presents a tightly interconnected plot that unfolds across three films. Each film builds on its predecessor to craft an overarching story. The mysteries and questions posed in one film find resolution in the subsequent ones, creating a satisfying cohesion. The films are also renowned for their realistic and intense action sequences, particularly the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes and car chases. The use of shaky cam and quick editing, though divisive among some viewers, adds a sense of urgency and realism to the action. Oliver Wood shot all three movies but adopted some of Paul Green Greengrass's pseudo-documentary style shaky cam when Greengrass took over from Dougley Mann. The technique has been both praised and criticised. The camera does seem to pull back from the action a little in the Bourne Ultimatum to allow viewers to see the fights a little better than in the almost claustrophobic Bourne Supremacy. The story starts out in Europe and eventually works its way towards the US and home for Bourne on his search for answers. The locations take in much of continental Europe and Russia as well as North Africa before tying things up in America. The pace of the trilogy is well executed with perfect balance between action sequences and moments of character introspection. The films maintain a high level of tension throughout and there is a frenetic pace to ultimatum where the film gallops forward and wastes no time in exposition, focusing on action and pulling together loose ends to complete the saga. The music composed by John Powell contributes significantly to the trilogy's atmosphere. The memorable and distinctive score enhances the emotional impact of key scenes and adds to the overall cinematic experience. The score suits the dreary backdrop of a wintry Europe and in so doing aptly creates a palpable feeling of a cold war being waged. Alongside Matt Damon, the trilogy features a strong supporting cast including actors like Joan Allen, Julia Stiles, Brian Cox, Chris Cooper and David Strathairn. Their performances enhance the depth of the characters and the overall quality of the films. While they rarely meet Bourne on screen, they are perfect predators in the cat and mouse game being played out. The Bourne trilogy has had a lasting impact on the action thriller genre, influencing subsequent films and TV shows. Its approach to realistic action, espionage themes and character-driven storytelling has become a benchmark for similar projects. The overarching narrative of the Bourne trilogy revolves around the central character Jason Bourne, a highly skilled operative suffering from amnesia. The trilogy is based on Robert Ludlum's novels, but takes creative liberties in adapting the source material. The narrative weaves a complex tale of identity, conspiracy and redemption across the three films. The story begins with Jason Bourne being found floating in the Mediterranean Sea with no memory of his identity, but possessing exceptional skills. As he tries to piece together his past, he discovers that he is a highly trained assassin and becomes a target for those who want him dead. The film introduces the mysterious Treadstone program, and Bourne's quest for answers sets the stage for the overarching conspiracy. Bourne's past catches up with him as he becomes implicated in an operation gone wrong in Bourne Supremacy. This installment delves deeper into the conspiracy behind Treadstone and introduces Pamela Landy, a CIA operative who becomes a key player in the narrative. The final chapter, Ultimatum, sees Bourne determined to expose the truth about Treadstone and the people responsible for his predicament. The narrative becomes a relentless pursuit as Bourne races against time, evading both the CIA and a new assassin program, Blackbriar. The film reveals Bourne's real name, David Webb, and explores the origins of Treadstone and its connection to other covert programs. Pamela Landy undergoes a significant character arc, transitioning from hunting Bourne to realising the corruption within the CIA, aligning herself with Bourne's quest for justice. The film's climax in New York concludes with Bourne confronting key figures behind the conspiracy and finally regaining a measure of closure and control over his life. The trilogy successfully reaches its conclusion by addressing the core questions that have driven Bourne's journey. Identity. Bourne discovers his true identity as David Webb and reconciles the person he was with the person he has become. Bourne seeks redemption for his past actions as an assassin, attempting to bring those responsible to justice while protecting innocent lives. The trilogy resolves the overarching conspiracy, exposing the corruption within the CIA and dismantling the covert programs that manipulated Bourne's life. Bourne's character evolves from a confused amnesiac to a determined and self-aware individual. The trilogy also provides closure for supporting characters like Pamela.
Pamela Landy. The three films craft a compelling and intricate narrative that gradually unveils the layers of conspiracy surrounding its protagonists. The conclusion brings a sense of resolution to Bourne's personal journey, effectively tying up loose ends and delivering a satisfying ending to the overarching story. The dreary European city backdrop and the Cold War atmosphere play crucial roles in establishing the mood and tone of the Bourne trilogy, contributing to the film's distinctive atmosphere and enhancing the overall espionage thriller experience. The trilogy predominantly unfolds in European cities, characterised by their moody, overcast atmospheres. Locations like Paris, Berlin and Moscow are portrayed with a sense of mystery and intrigue. The narrow streets, dimly lit alleys and architectural nuances create an environment that echoes the shadowy world of espionage. The choice of European cities as settings provides a visually striking backdrop. The films utilise the unique urban landscapes to create visually memorable and realistic action sequences. The gritty and worn down look of the cities adds to the authenticity of Bourne's world, contrasting sharply with the glamorous portrayal of some spy films. The European backdrop also contributes to the cultural and historical context of the film. The architecture, languages spoken and the overall ambience evoke a sense of history and complexity, underscoring the deep-seated conspiracies that Bourne is unravelling. The trilogy maintains a sense of the Cold War's lingering influence on espionage and intelligence operations. Treadstone, the covert programme that created Bourne, is presented as a relic of Cold War era black ops. This connection adds depth to the narrative, suggesting that Bourne is a product of a bygone era with its own set of moral ambiguities. The backdrop contributes to the political intrigue and betrayal woven into the trilogy's narrative. The remnants of Cold War era covert operations cast a shadow over the characters and their motivations. The shifting allegiances and hidden agendas within intelligence agencies reflect the historical tensions of the Cold War. This atmosphere enhances the global scope of the films, with Bourne's journey taking him across continents. The espionage elements are heightened by the geopolitical context, emphasising the international implications of the conspiracy. The setting is also reflected in the film's portrayal of technological paranoia. The surveillance culture and the use of advanced technologies by intelligence agencies contribute to the sense of a world where privacy is a rare commodity. The dreary backdrop of a Cold War Europe and its atmosphere are an integral component of the Bourne trilogy's mood and tone. These elements not only provide a visually captivating setting but also infuse the film with a sense of historical depth, political complexity and a pervasive atmosphere of secrecy and danger. The combination of these factors elevates the trilogy beyond a typical action series, creating a rich and immersive cinematic experience. There is also the matter of two largely unnecessary sequels that followed the trilogy we've just discussed. When discussing the Bourne trilogy, it's hard to ignore the two sequels that subsequently followed. Bourne Legacy 2012 and Jason Bourne 2016. They are two films that expanded the Bourne franchise beyond the original trilogy. While opinions about these sequels vary, some argue that they are superfluous and unnecessary for several reasons. The Bourne Legacy introduces a new protagonist, Aaron Cross, played by Jeremy Renner, and shifts the focus away from Jason Bourne. Some viewers felt that this departure diluted the essence of the original trilogy and character-driven narrative that made it compelling. The lack of involvement from Matt Damon was also also a factor. One of the main reasons the Bourne trilogy resonated with audiences was Damon's portrayal of Jason Bourne. When Damon returned for Jason Bourne, there were expectations for a strong continuation of the character's story. However, some viewers found the narrative less engaging, and the film struggled to recapture the same level of intrigue and intensity. Both films have been criticised for rehashing plot elements from the original trilogy. The Bourne Legacy attempts to explore the consequences of the Treadstone programme, while Jason Bourne delves into Bourne's past again. Some viewers found these storylines to be less inspired and more like variations on themes already explored in the earlier films. The expansion of the narrative in these sequels raised questions about the necessity of further exploring the Bourne universe. Some argued that the additional layers introduced in the Bourne legacy and Jason Bourne felt forced and didn't contribute substantially to the overall story arc. Both films received mixed to average reviews from critics, with some expressing disappointment in the storytelling, character development, and overall execution. The lukewarm critical reception may have contributed to the perception 
that these sequels were not essential additions to the franchise. The release of multiple Bourne films within a relatively short time frame may have contributed to a sense of franchise fatigue. The original trilogy was well received and extending the story further with new characters and plot lines may not have resonated as strongly with audiences. It is important to note that opinions on these sequels are subjective and that there are viewers who enjoyed the expansion of the Bourne universe. However, the general sentiment among some fans and critics is that the Bourne legacy and Jason Bourne may be seen as superfluous and unnecessary additions that did not match the impact and acclaim of the original trilogy. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.